I think national identity and racial identity get tied together, and so there, you know, one way people kind of consolidate a national identity is this is who we are, this is our people, these are our traditions, that's why we're a nation. And when you have immigration and people from different places, all of a sudden that gets challenged, and you forget that we're all human beings. We have a lot of the same core values. This world is very diverse. And that there's always been global migration. There's always been movement and culture that's been shared and language that's shared. But when it becomes political, when politicians scapegoat immigrants, you all of a sudden have a populace that becomes anti-immigrant. How come I don't have a job? It must be immigrants. And often poor people get pit against each other in those situations. People who are struggling and have the same needs are pit against each other. I see the xenophobia. I fear it. And I think the solution to it ultimately is is education. It's representation. It's a system where we complicate a narrative that hate groups put out, that people who have political reason to promote hate, we have to make sure we counter that with our own individual stories. I know it sounds very basic, but I think this is why I like persons more than people. I think there's a lot of people who will say all sorts of god-awful things in public spaces, but when they actually deal with human beings on a one-on-one level are lovely, and they're caring, thoughtful, and they make exceptions, they see complication, and eventually you have enough examples where those exceptions are no longer exceptions. There's clearly something bigger happening here. Clearly, the story that I'm being told isn't true. And so I think that's a huge part of combating xenophobia. It's redefining community. 